complex fractions mean fractions within fractions. Here's an example. 3 over x plus 2 over 7x squared divided by x over 14 minus 1 over x. There are two typical methods that we can use to solve these. You don't have to know how to do both, but you should know how to do one well. So one example, one way we can do this, and they have lovely titles of method one and method two, and I never remember which one's which, so we'll go ahead and just do it, the first one. And that is to add the two fractions in the numerator by getting a common denominator. So just looking at the top part of this fraction, the denominators are x and 7x squared. So the common denominator would be 7x squared. And then you're going to go through and build up each fraction in the top to have that denominator. So 3 over x. I'm trying to get to 7x squared. So that means top and bottom would get multiplied by 7x. So I'll get a 21x for the numerator for that first 3 over x. When I look at the second fraction on top, it has the 7x squared I'm shooting for. So I just bring across that plus 2. And now I'm minus 1 over x and figure out what the common denominator is there. So between 14 and x, that common denominator would just be 14 times x. We'll build up each fraction to have that. So the first one will be x squared, right? I'll need an x top and bottom. In the top, it turns that x into an x squared. Second fraction, top and bottom multiplies by 14, so that I'll get an x squared minus 14 for the denominator. And now, when I look at this, I have one fraction with one denominator divided by a second fraction, single denominator, a monomial denominator, I could say. So if I write this out, this would be 21x plus 2 divided by 7x squared divided by x squared minus 14 over 14x. But we all know that if we divide by a fraction, we take that second fraction, flip and multiply. So times 14x over x squared minus 14. Now when I'm multiplying, I look from top to bottom on either fraction to see if there's anything common. x squared minus 14. That's not going to factor. It could be difference of squares, but 14 isn't a perfect square, so I can't do that. So I'm going to go this way between the 7 and the 14. Right, They are factors. These behind a 2 there. This x and that x squared, again, those are factors. These behind a plain old x. This 7 and that 21, it couldn't have gone that way, just like I can't with the 14 and the 21, because neither the 14 nor especially the 21 here is a factor. It's part of a term. I can't say 21 times everything else in the top. So I think I might be done. I'm going to go ahead and take a regroup step. I have 21x plus 2, and then that's times a 2. I'll go ahead and put the 2 out in front. In the denominator, I have that x left over, and then timesing an x minus 14. Doesn't look all that simple, but at least I only have one fraction bar, which is what my goal is. So that's one way that we can go about simplifying complex fractions. Let me show the, the other way that I typically do most often. So we'll go with our same starting rational expression. And then the way I do this is I'm going to multiply what I call the big top and the big bottom by the LCD. So I'm going to look at all of the fractions here and decide what the LCD is. So I'm going to need an x. I'm going to need a 7x squared, but the x will be taken care of there. I need to have at least 14, right? So I'm looking at these pieces to get the lowest common denominator that all of these will work with. So 14x squared is going to work for me. Everybody up here goes into 14x squared. So 
I'll go ahead and we copy one more time. 3 over x plus 2 over 7x squared over x over 14 minus 1 over x. And I'm going to multiply the big top by 14x squared over 1. And the big bottom by 14x squared over 1. It distributes, and as it distributes, it cancels each of those little denominators. So the 14x squared times the 3 over x, if you want to stick that one under the 14, see what's going to happen here? This x takes care of one of those. Okay. And then we'll have plus 14x squared over 1 times 2 over 7x squared. Again, the 7x squared is going to cancel the 14x squared, leave behind a 2. Same thing on the bottom. I'm not going to write it distributed here. I hope you'll go with me. 14x squared times this first one, the 14s will cancel. I'm left with x squared times x, x cubed. 14x squared times 1 over x, the x's cancel. I'm left with a minus 14x. Let's go ahead and tidy up that top that I left behind. I have a 14 times an x times a 3. 14 times 3 is 42, so 42x. Second part, I'm going to have a 2 times 2, so plus 4 is all. And then in the denominator, x cubed minus 14x. And if you will look at the answer we got before, it's exactly the same, except down here, those coefficients in front have been distributed. And that's how you simplify complex fractions.